Good evening, everyone. Um, how are you all tonight? Good. Good? <laughs> well, thanks for coming. I know everyone's like, really busy. Um, as most of you guys know, my name is Kalila. I am the CSP rep for HIES, and the purpose of our club is to promote cultural understanding of Hmong culture on the CSP SGU campus and to build a community across all culture contexts. HIES is dedicated to establishing and maintaining Hmong culture on campus, as well as being a support group and resource to enable students to become effective leaders in their community. So I'm so happy to be introducing to you all our event speakers tonight who are from MIPAC. So MIPAC is the nation's first Hmong American Women's Political Action Committee. MIPAC is committed to working with new American populations and strive to achieve quality education, economics, and health for all women and girls. MIPAC will be presenting about who they are, what they do, and we'll be following up with a um, participatory <laughs> discussion and leaving time at the end for any questions. And so with that, I want to give some background on each speaker. So we have Tao Mei Zhang. Can you all raise your hand? Oh, Tommy Zhang, sorry. yep, who is one of the co-founders and executive committee member of MIPAC. Tommy has a strong portfolio of legal and legislative advocacy, public policy research, and community organizing experience. She led the Center for Health Equity at the Minnesota Department of Health and oversaw community engagement, data and research, and grant-making initiatives aimed at reducing health disparities. She was the policy director for the Minnesota Housing Partnership, where she led federal and state housing policy initiatives. She received her JD from the University of Pennsylvania Law School, an MPA from Columbia University School of International and Public Affairs, and a BA from Mount Holyoke College. Next, we have Pachua Vang. Um, she is a Hmong American woman who has lived on the east side of St. Paul for the past 20 years. Pachua is an LPN who works for a home care agency. She is active in various communities and organizations in education, housing, and health issues, such as Hmong Health Care Professional Coalition, Community Dental, St. Paul Strong, Dayton's Bluff Community Council, Eastside Neighborhood Development Center, and Eastside Elders Senior Services. Pachua is also a youth mental health first aid trainer. And then lastly, we have Kazo Yang, who is one of the six Minnesota Supreme Court certified Hmong interpreters in the country. Kazo has been an interpreter for 26 years, specializing in legal interpreting. She was a trainer with the Minnesota Supreme Court and the, in the Wisconsin Supreme Court interpreters programs, as well as a current raider for the U of M and Century College's translation and interpreting programs. Kazo, co-authored the first Hmong legal dictionary for the Wisconsin Supreme Court and serves, serves as a consultant for the National Center for State Courts, which certifies court interpreters throughout the country. Kozoa was the first Hmong to sit on Governor Jesse Ventura's Commission on Judicial Selection in Minnesota from 1999 to 2003. She is a member of the Minnesota Supreme Court Interpreter Advisory Committee. Um, is a member of the Minnesota Supreme Court Equality and Justice Committee and was chair of the nonprofit organization Empowering Hmong Women in 2012, 2013, and 14. So please help um, give them a big round of applause. <laughs> and then I'll hand it over to Tome and the rest. Okay, so I'm going to use this so the video can pick it up. Um, but if I Um, so if it starts to get too loud, just like cover your ears, and it'll be my signal. So first I want to thank uh, Kalila and the Hmong Americans um, Involving Students organization. Thank you for inviting us to be here today. We are really happy um, to be able to talk about MIPAC and share our stories and share why MIPAC is important. And um, so I'll just give you a quick overview. Um, I'll uh, run the PowerPoint and we'll uh, first tell you what a PAC is and then why, my, why, do we, why we started my PAC, share some of our personal stories, talk about the three issues that we care about, and then have a participatory conversation afterwards. I have some questions to ask you and then you guys can ask us some questions as well. Um, so I thought since we have such a small group, it would be great for everyone to go around and maybe introduce yourself, um, tell us where you're from, and tell us um, what year you are. Su Jane Yang, I'm not a student up here nor at um, St. Cloud. I've been hired on by Take Action Minnesota to do some organizing up here. Um, okay. Where you from? Oh, Eastside St. Paul. 
Um, I'm Vu, I'm a sophomore here, and um, I'm from Frogtown, St. Paul. Um, I'm Kalila Moa. I am a sophomore here, majoring in computer science and minor in gender studies. I am from New Hope, Minnesota. I'm Amy. I'm also a sophomore, and I'm from East St. Paul. Um, I'm Ivy. I'm a sophomore, and I'm from Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Uh, I'm Kong Meng, and I'm a first year, and I'm from St. Paul. Hello, I'm Sia. I'm a first year also, and I'm from St. Paul. Hello, I'm Jin Shi. I'm from China. My major is nutrition. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm originally born in Brockton, Massachusetts, but I come from St. Paul. First year. I'm Brianna. I'm a senior, and I'm from St. Paul. I'm Tali, and I'm a senior, and I'm from Eastside St. Paul. I'm Priscilla, and I'm a freshman, and I'm from Brooklyn Park. I'm Kajong, and I'm a first year, and I'm from Brooklyn Park. I'm Pam, I'm a senior, and I'm from Cottage Grove. <coughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm Chu Yang, uh, I'm a sophomore, majoring in global business and minor in communication, and I'm from Minneapolis. North side. You need a mic? I'm Jaime from Immokalee, Florida, and I'm a sophomore. Oh, and, and I'm a computer science major. Awesome. Yes. And then, as you heard earlier, this is Gajua and Pachua. And so, um, well, I'm so glad uh, to know where you guys are from because I'm also from Brooklyn Park, so yo. Um, and I used to go to school in Massachusetts, so I've been to Brockton. <laughs> um, and of course, who hasn't been to St. Paul or Minneapolis, right? And Coon Rapids. Um, so it's, we're all among family here. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about my pack. Um, my pack is the first Hmong uh, American uh, Political Action Committee. And uh, raise your hand, how many people know what a political action committee is? I barely see these hands. What is going on? It's like, <laughs> raise, yes. yes. Two, three. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So do you want to tell us what a, since, since you're an employed person for a 501c4, we'll have someone who's a student explain. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess from my idea, political action community is like basically um, a community that stands on their political action and keeps together to um, basically go out on their political system. I don't know. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Do you want to give it a shot? Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> Kalila? Oh, I'm good. Okay. So a political action committee is basically a group of people who come together to raise money to endorse either issues and or candidates. And it's a private entity. It's not like a nonprofit or anything. It's a private entity where you're getting money. And so we have to document every penny that we get so people know where we're getting the money from. So let's say, for example, if I give $20, they have to put down that I gave $20. I have to put my address. I have to put where I work. I, I have to tell them like everything about me and all that information is collected. So, um, so anyway, that's what a political action committee is. And someone earlier asked, you know, um, PACs have a really negative connotation, and um, because it's about money and power. So whenever there's something about money and power, there always seems to be something negative associated with it. But um, my PAC, and so, um, how many people know what my my means? Yeah, so you know how Hmong people always have a prefix like my jewel or my yang or my pa? So it's a term of endearment, right? It's, it means like dear or sweetie. And um, lots of Hmong people or Hmong girls have that name, my. Or if they don't know your name, then they'll just say, oh, me, my, right? So, um, so we called ourselves my pack to symbolize 
um, how much we love women and also how much we want to um, empower ourselves and generations to come. And so my PAC is the first national uh, PAC um, created by Hmong American women for Hmong American women. Um, with that being said, it, anyone can be a member. All you need to do is contribute to the PAC to be a member and anyone can be politically active in the PAC. Um, and so, but if you are part of the PAC, then it also means that you believe in our values and our values are that we support racial justice, gender equity and immigration rights. And that is part of all of our identities, right? That um, many of the women who are part of my PAC came here as either refugees or immigrants. Um, clearly we're all women. And then also um, that we're women of color. So that's the racial justice component, the gender equity component and the immigrant rights component. And um, we are nonpartisan, so we're not leaning DFL or Republican. We'll support any, we'll support and endorse any candidate who believes in our values. Um, let's see. The next question that we usually get when we talk about my PAC is, you know, why do we want to start a PAC here in Minnesota, and why about women? Um, so let me. So this earlier was just um, that the fact that we're the first Hmong American PAC organization, that we believe in racial justice, gender equity, and immigrant rights, and that we're nonpartisan. Oh, in this photo, these are all the executive committee members, minus two people, two people weren't able to make it, but um, these are all the folks who are leading and organizing the PAC. So uh, why us? Well, Minnesota is home to uh, more than 70,000 Hmong people. And not we put Hmong and then we also put Hmong American, but um, we want to be really clear, we're a Hmong American PAC because um, one, it's about being engaged in the American political process, right? And that our Hmong identity is just equally as important as our American identity. Um, so I just wanted to say that up front. And that we're also the largest um, Asian population Asian minority group in Minnesota. Um, and I shared earlier that um, I worked for State Senator Mi Mo's campaign when she first ran way back in 2001. And, um, you know, the first elected Hmong person in Minnesota was a woman. She ran for the school board. And, um, and then Senator Mi Mo made history with being uh, elected to the highest state office um, in the nation when she won her election. And she was able to win by organizing the Hmong vote. And no one at the time believed that she could win. Um, the DFLers didn't believe she could win. Um, she was running against a longtime incumbent, um, Tim Mahoney, who now has become one of her good friends. But uh, Tim Mahoney at the time, who is currently still a state representative, uh, was running for the Senate seat. And uh, they were really heavy comp competitors. And so, um, she was able to organize almost every single uh, Hmong clan to come out and vote for her. And people were coming out to volunteer from all over uh, the metro area, not just from east side of St. Paul. And at the time, I wasn't even living on the east side. Um, so behind every major campaign, there have been Hmong American women who've either been campaign managers, organizers, communications directors, fundraisers. I mean, you name the position, we probably held every one of them. In, including being the actual candidate itself, right? Um, the other reason why we wanted to start a PAC is that we understand that the being politically engaged has many different phases and uh, times and opportunities. And for a long time, we've been organizing the vote to get people out to vote for candidates that support them or to get people out to vote for Hmong candidates. Now we believe that we not only need to get people into office, uh, not only do people need to vote, so voting is the first step, but voting for candidates they believe in, and then the, um, and the next phase is holding our candidates accountable. Uh, not only for the, our, the issues that we care about, but making sure that um, our budget is distributed according to the needs of our community. And so um, I wanted to ask, how many people have ever been to the state capitol? Raise those hands high. I can't see it way down here. Okay, so what happens at the state capitol? I'm just going to start pointing. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. You can guess. Guess. I'll say 
Yes. What else happens? Yes. Lobbying. Yes. Lots of lobbying. What does lobbying mean? Anyone want to add anything else? Okay, so the Minnesota State Capitol is where laws are passed, right? And so the um, state representatives um, on the House floor, they pass all laws on the House floor. State senators, they pass laws on the Senate floor. And then the governor's office is in the state capitol and he has to sign the bill into law. Or if he lets it lapse for three business days, then it automatically becomes law. But that's where our laws are created. And that's where our budget is appropriated to. So um, our state collects all of our taxes because they use our tax dollars to pay for all the programs and services that we have. And one of the things that, um, if you ever question what our, our state uh, funding is used for, I mean, think about the roads that we're on every day. We have great operating roads and lights because we pay for that, it's not free. And both of that comes from state money, local money, and county money. Um, so there's multiple la layers of government. But at the state capitol is where state laws happen. And the most important thing that happens is um, the appropriation of state dollars. Okay? Um, so that's just a little context and history about why it's important uh, to go to the state capitol. So whoever has never gone to the state capitol, you should go. And you should go to uh, the Senate floor and the House floor um, because that's where debates, conversations, voting, all of that happens there. Um, and so I wanted to share um, a little bit about why uh, I became interested in my PAC and my two colleagues here are also going to share too because uh, my PAC, the most um, fascinating thing about um, the executive committee and our members is that we come from a variety of different experiences, perspectives, and professions. And you'll see that among the three of us, that we come from very different backgrounds. And so um, as we came together to pool our network and our relationships and our resources, we became a lot more powerful. Um, and when I say that, uh, who understands what I'm saying when I say networks? <laughs> yeah, like um, having access to many different avenues that can come together and then, like leverage uh, each other's resource. Yes. So the people I know are not the same people that Pachua knows and they're not the same people that Kajo knows. But since we're working together, we're bringing all the different people that we know in our life to come together to um, organize our money so that we can organize our power. Um, and that's what makes my pack really powerful because we realized once we started bringing these women together that um, Hmong American women know a lot of people. Uh, partly because we're really nice, partly because we give a lot and, um, and then people are willing to give back to us. And then also because um, the community sees um, the need and the value in organizing Hmong American women, right? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and let my colleagues share a little bit of their experiences and then I'll share mine and then we'll go into the next piece. They want me to go next. Um, again, my name is Kajua. Um, the reason why I joined my PAC is because of the work that I've done. I've been a certified core interpreter for 26 years. And a lot of people think that because you're, um, you're an interpreter, uh, you, you're just bilingual. But working in the court system, it's completely different from interpreting at the hospitals or uh, in the school.